Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, New St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8th, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. How to send and receive 65,536 computational physics codes and send and receive them to and from 65,536 processors that define and outline a new internet is a subject that is abstract and impossible to teach. Communicating to and from 65,536 processors that define a small copy of the internet was not in the supercomputer textbooks of the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. That new internet was a small copy of a never before understood internet that had only 65,536 processors around a globe instead of billions of computers around a globe. I was dragged into the past by what I invented in the 1980s, namely that parallel processing makes computers faster and makes supercomputers fastest. Back in the early 1990s, I traveled to American universities to give supercomputer lectures on how I experimentally discovered how to perform the fastest computations and perform them by sending and receiving and solving 65,536 extreme scaled computational fluid dynamics codes and data and sending and receiving and solving each computation intensive problem and solving each across 65,536 processors. Back in the 1980s, Programming via message passing across a global network of 65,536 processors or across a new internet was a supercomputer feat that other computational physicists didn't dare approach. For that reason, I traveled to American universities and as a visiting distinguished lecturer that was sponsored by the two leading computer societies in the world, namely the Computer Society of the IEEE, that is the largest computer society, and the Association for Computing Machinery, that is the oldest computer society. I was sent to American universities to lecture on my experimental discovery that was in the news in 1989 and on my theoretical discovery of how and why email messages that contain codes and data are sent and received across a new internet that was outlined by 65,536 processors. Back in the 1980s, I was the only full-time programmer of the most massively parallel processing supercomputer ever built and that was powered by 65,536 processors. Back in the 1980s, no academic computer scientist had programmed the most massively parallel processing supercomputer. Therefore, it was impossible to learn how to parallel process the toughest problems in physics and learn the technology in an American 
or European University. It was impossible in part because the fastest supercomputer in the world cost the budget of a small nation. It was impossible to learn parallel processing from an academic computer scientist who had not and cannot parallel process extreme scale computational physics codes and process them to and from and at each of 65,536 processors that outlined a new internet. Message passing across millions of processors is so fundamental that it is impossible to create the modern supercomputer that computes in parallel without first experimentally discovering and inventing how to pass email messages to its more than 10 million commodity of the shelf processors. A discovery is like a stone thrown into the pool of knowledge. The discovery generate wider ripples each time we throw it into the pool of knowledge or apply it. The discovery in science opened up doors in technology. Parallel processing allows computational tools developed for computational physics to be used in computational medicine and computation or computational mathematics and used to solve the toughest problems that demand the fastest supercomputers. The importance of computational science was underscored in an article that was in the May 8, 1987 issue of the Chronicle of Higher Education, the flagship newspaper that presents news to universities. That article was written by computer and information technology writer Judith Axler Turner. The article was titled, quote, Some hail computational science as biggest advance since Newton Galileo, unquote. My 4th of July of 1989, experimental discovery of how to use massively parallel processing to solve initial boundary value problems of modern calculus and computational physics made the news headlines as the biggest advance in computational science. That experimental discovery that I made across a new internet and made at 10.15 a.m. New York time of the 4th of July of 1989 was a paradigm-shifting discovery that opened the door to the massively parallel processing supercomputer that is the world's fastest computer of today. That invention of the modern supercomputer will never be duplicated or be invented again. That invention is the reason American children are writing school reports on the contributions of Philip M. Aguale to the development of the computer. Each year, the computer gets faster and a new world record in the speed of the computer is set. Yet, the faster computer is powered by essentially the same sequential processing technology that was invented in the 1940s and or is powered by essentially the same vector processing technology that was invented in the 1960s. My world record in the speed 
of the modern supercomputer that I set on the 4th of July of 1989 that made the news headlines was a first because it opened the door to a new supercomputer that computes in parallel, in parallel rather than computing in sequence. Each forthcoming year, there will be a fastest supercomputer but there will forever remain the first massively parallel processing supercomputer that is faster than any vector processing supercomputer. My 1989 experimental discovery allowed research computational mathematicians to quickly understand how to use an ensemble of processors to solve the other initial boundary value problems that are merely variations of the initial boundary value problems that I experimentally discovered how to solve. My 4th of July of 1989 experimental discovery of how and why parallel processing makes computers faster and makes supercomputers fastest led to the commercialization of the parallel processing supercomputer. After my 1989 experimental discovery, parallel processing supercomputer went from the outside to the mainstream. After my 1989 experimental discovery, there was an explosion of research and sales and usage of parallel processing computers and supercomputers. I am not the technician that unpacked the crates of the new supercomputer. I am not the technician that installed the internal computational components of the new supercomputer. Nor am I the technician that installed the internal networking components of the new supercomputer. And I am not the technician that hooked those components into the cooling and power infrastructures for the new supercomputer. However, I am called the father of the new supercomputer because I experimentally discovered how and why the technology of massively parallel processing makes the new supercomputer fastest. Dalono, Afambo Chukura Philip Emagwale, Abum Oyonicha. Yaga from na emagwale dot com commercia and Philip Emagwale at emagwale dot com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Insightful and brilliant lecture. Insightful and brilliant lecture.